morning everybody we are about 12 miles north of Coleman Alabama loves exit 322 on I-65 just got out of the shower yay feels so much better now I got to change my clothes so subject for today the campaign We have candidates that are calling themselves Republicans that aren't really Republicans. One of them happens to be the most popular candidate for the moment, Donald Trump. Now, he has allegedly changed his position on every major issue. Abortion, immigration, gun control. Now I'm talking about conservative issues. He supported an assault weapons ban. He supported an abortion. He support even late-term abortions. He supported uh, amnesty for illegals. He even supported Obamacare. But now he's against all of them. He's also made comments about having bought politicians. Why was Hillary at his uh, wedding? Because I donated a whole bunch of money, so I owned her. What kind of example does that pose? Donald Trump talks a good game. He, uh... Actually, my former military career, psychological warfare, he'd have been damn good at it. He can lie with the best of them. Now, there is one thing I want to defend him on. He made a comment about Jeb Bush's wife. Not actually about his wife, but about Jeb Bush's thinking. His thought processes. He, to paraphrase, he said that if his wife was from Mexico, he'd have a soft spot in his heart for Mexicans too. And then would support amnesty for illegal immigrants. Jeb Bush's wife is from Mexico. Jeb Bush supports amnesty for illegal immigrants. The comment was about Jeb. It wasn't about Jeb's wife. It was an if-then statement that was not directed at the if. It was directed at Jeb Bush's mindset. So that's the one thing I'm going to uh, support Donald on. His comment about how Carly Fiorina looks, he's backpedaling now. But that was just a general slight from the owner of the Miss America and Miss Universe pageants. I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. I also don't trust Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush is way to the left of his brother. And way to the left of his father. So, I don't trust him at all. Chris Christie, he's just a downright fraud. Uh, he says whatever he can to get ahead. Uh, he campaigns by polls. Oh, my load came down. Well, let's see. But, uh... I'll tell you straight up who I'm standing behind right now. And not necessarily in that order. But I would love to see both these names on the ticket. It's Ted Cruz and Carly Fiorina. I'm not going to tell you what order I want them in. Ted Cruz has put up a good fight in the Senate. He's fought hard. Carly has the business background to fix his, this economy. 
She understands business. She understands how government affects business. Ted Cruz understands international affairs a whole lot better than Carly does. Carly understands economics a whole lot better than Ted does. I think they would make the best team that we have had possibly since the founders. Now it may sound like I'm bad mouthing Reagan, but I'm not. Reagan was a great president, but he made a lot of mistakes, the biggest of which was trusting the Democrats. Which brings us to the final portion of this discussion, which is bipartisanship. Now, bipartisanship actually means we're both supposed to work together. Give it a little, take a little on both sides. The definition of bipartisanship over the last 30 years has been when the Democrats are in control, you do it the Democrats' way. And when the Republicans are in control, you damn well better listen to what the Democrats have to say and do it their way. That don't sound too bipartisan to me. So that's just a heads up. Whenever you hear a Democrat talking about bipartisanship, just remember all the closed-door meetings that the Republicans were denied access to when they were plotting Obamacare. So, we just stopped by the yard. <laughs> Ended up staying there a little bit longer because it's Driver's Appreciation Week. company was very nice, called up Chick-fil-A, and had Chick-fil-A cater lunch for everybody. They had Chick-fil-A sandwiches, they had chicken strips, they had subs, chips, uh, cookies, lemonade, sodas. stuffed. <laughs> All I had was two chicken sandwiches and a little bag of chips. I'm stuffed and two cups of lemonade. But that was very nice of the company to do that. Talked to the guy in the shop. Told him to order me a new front bumper. So we'll see how much it's going to cost. To replace the current broken, thanks to Bambi, fiberglass bumper. And put on a nice shiny chrome Texas bumper. It'll probably be a lot less expensive and, in my opinion, look a whole lot better. Even though it is a Volvo. still look better than uh, the stock bumper in my opinion. Chris wants a chrome bumper anyway. So Lance and at least half the guys in the dispatch office were extremely happy with the big huge batch of Mexican shrimp cocktail that Chris made. We're sitting there eating our chicken sandwiches and all these guys from the dispatch office are walking up. Oh, thank you. It's so good. That was her doing. She made it. I didn't make this. She did. Yeah, and he doesn't eat it either. Because I make it. No, because I just yes. don't like it. I don't have to like everything. You don't like it. See? No answer. Because I got the hickey belches from the chicken sandwiches and the lemonade. I do like stuff she makes. Just not everything. So she wants to exaggerate and say I dislike everything. Now we're on our way to Gunnersville, Alabama to pick up a load of chicken and carry it to 
our favorite place, Costco in Ellison, Arizona. Pager time again. And treatment a whole lot better than we get at Walmart. Okay, we're finally loaded. Uh, we got to the pickup around between 12.30 and 1. We finally got loaded at 9.30. And I had a 40 minute drive to the truck stop to scale it. Our weights are real good. This is one of the lightest loads we've ever hauled out of here. And then the ladies uh, there at the fuel desk wanted to just chat away and we ended up chatting for quite a bit. It's going to be a good night. Good night. Weather's good. Loads light. We're grossing a little over 66,000 pounds. And we got plenty of time to get there. still going to push. It's 1,773 miles and I want to be there by the end of my shift tomorrow night's shift. That way we can get a reset in and as soon as we're emptied out Monday morning we can rock and roll and be on our merry way. Get the next load. Our glasses are in at Brawley. We, uh, Chris and I each took in a pair of glasses, uh, get new lenses put in. Uh, hers she left sitting up on the dash in Vegas. And the heat uh, basically uh, didn't shatter, but it spider wet the lenses. Mine got scratched up, so our driving glasses are back. So it's going to be a good night. Uh, 44 miles, I'm going to get a left turn to take the uh, Birmingham Bypass. And we got bumpy roads after that. Mississippi, then Louisiana. Ooh, bumpy, bumpy. Good morning. Welcome to Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh oh. Yep, it's definitely time to get a windshield. <laughs> Our uh, AC also froze up on us. Where we had to sit yesterday was super, super dusty. Clogged our filters, caused the AC to freeze up. So we got everything shut off right now to thaw them out. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please share. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we'll see you tomorrow.